Welcome to the Real Estate Way to Wealth and Freedom podcast with Jacob Ayers, providing actionable content to help you along your journey to financial freedom through real estate investing. As the premier asset class, real estate has helped ordinary people just like you amass fortunes. The benefits of passive income from real estate investing will allow you to live a life you want. And now your host, entrepreneur, real estate investor, and apartment deal syndicator, Jacob Ayers. Hi, and welcome to the Real Estate Way to Wealth and Freedom podcast. I'm your host, Jacob Ayers. Today's guest is Mario Mazamuto. Mario is a coach, builder, best-selling author, and black sheep, self-proclaimed. So I'm excited to bring Mario on the show. Mario, hey, thanks so much for joining us. Jacob, man, thanks for having me. I'm really honored. It's our pleasure. Well, hey, Mario, before we jump into all things real estate, just take us back to your journey, who you are. Tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, where you're from, all that good stuff. Sure. Yeah. It's, uh, I can be here for like a 10 days telling you all the background. So I'll give you the 30 second kind of wrap my head around and come to uh, grips with is, is I was kicked out of high school multiple times. I used to not tell anybody this story and started to just kind of coming out. People would ask me and I'd, I'd admit it to one person and two people and three people and I asked, forget it. I'm just going to tell everybody. It, it feels nice to just say it. So yeah. my education formally is about an eighth grade education. Honestly, I got in a fist fight when I was in uh, ninth grade with a teacher actually, and I uh, got sent to another school and then I got kicked out of that school. I got sent to another school. Long story short, I started working full time at 14. Luckily that my, a lot of my family is self-employed. My father's a general contractor. And uh, been working in the trades, you know, summers and so on since I was a kid and just really just fell in love with working. And I think, you know, I quote unquote became an, a workaholic, luckily not an alcoholic or anything else. <laughs> <laughs> There's worse kinds of holics, right? <laughs> I, I Most definitely, man. So, you know, my pops, he's still working. He's 75 this year. Wow. He works seven days a week. He's a beast. His dad uh, worked literally until the week that he passed away. And he was really, really sick with pancreatic cancer when he passed away. Wow. And he couldn't even hold himself up hardly. And he was in this cabinet shop making cabinets and so on and so forth. So I think I come from a long line of these get crazy workers. And I've evolved that into um, really not working so much physically with my hands, even though I do a lot of rehabs uh, and so on. But I've learned to delegate a little bit. But uh, so that's a, a bit of my past. I've got uh, two kids, uh, 14 and nine. My 14 year old is a girl, my nine year old's boy. I've uh, been married for 11 years now. And my wife homeschools our kids and just kind of one of those, she's very happy being a stay at home mom and so on. It's not my doing. She wanted to do it. I said, hey, yeah. <laughs> you think you can handle it, man? Have at it. I can't do it. That's for sure. But real estate appraisal company, I've done that for 18 years now. I run a flipping business. I've done that for it'll be 11 years this year and then run a construction company as well. And as well as I used to do personal coaching, like life coaching, and I'm actually a certified life coach uh, through Brennan Bouchard and Tony Robbins. But I've turned that into more of real estate coaching now because uh, that's really, really my passion is all things real estate. And so um, coach around that stuff as well. But uh, I, I'm sure I missed and glossed over a bunch of stuff, but that's a uh, you know two minute version. No, that's definitely the uh, definition of a workaholic amongst both you and your wife. It sounds like she's the uh, true workaholic, you know, stay-at-home mom, homeschooling, probably uh, outworks you. <laughs> 100%, man. I just get to have fun all day long and hang out with people I enjoy hanging out with. and you know, I see you on social media just doing all kinds of cool stuff. But before yeah. you kind of get into that, tell us how you stumbled across real estate from that kind of day one. You, know, you mentioned you've got a flipping business. Do you have yeah. an appraisal business? How'd you uh, come across real estate? Yeah. So although like with my dad, although he's in construction, he made a lot of his money in real estate. And so my family is, uh, I'm first generation here. My dad came from Sicily when he was nine years old and uh, his family, you know, him and his parents scraped together money and literally started buying properties together when he was a teenager. So my dad bought his first place in an income property at like 17. So I kind of got that bug from him, right? He built many of his own places and he's managed all his own places, still owns rental properties, but it's like, you know, single family here, duplex there, fourplex there, nothing ginormous. So I think I got that bug from him. And then really it was 
I had a really cush job. When I was a teenager, I was building custom home theater systems for celebrities, basically, right? That's and cool. So I, I, yeah, it was, it was a neat job. It didn't pay much, surprisingly. I mean, we worked for billionaires. I get mocked just going to throw out names, but let me just say we worked for billionaires. I'm here in the San Francisco Bay Area, so we have plenty of them here. But it didn't pay very well, and it was a very tough job, surprisingly. I mean, that caliber of customer, very hard to please. Yeah. So really, I was grinding all the time, and I just was getting sick of it. I saw my dad's business. He doesn't leave town. We have a small town of 40,000 people. He literally doesn't leave town, hasn't left town for 20 years for work, I'm talking about. Where me, I was traveling three, four hours to the all the way in the South Bay and the Bay Area and so on to do work. And I started looking at that and I said, you know what? I think I want to get into real estate and kind of back in maybe to what he's doing. Long story short, I met a guy who was an appraiser and that's kind of how I started that journey. Had to go get my GED before I started to do that though, because I realized, oh shoot, I don't have anything. So got that, got my appraiser's license, started grinding. And then the reason I wanted to get into the trades is the same thing I tell people now. Hey, I want to get into real estate. I want to start flipping. I want to you know, do this and that. And I say, what do you do for a profession? Oh, you know, I'm in IT or whatever. And I say, I think it would benefit you to go get your real estate license. If you want to be an appraiser, get your appraiser's license. Something that's in that area. And the reason why is because you're learning while you're making money. And so I wouldn't be nearly as good at at what I'm doing right now, if it wasn't for me learning on the job, really, and learning from other people. And then, you know, you really just have to have a passion for it. So there's plenty of people who want to get invested, involved in real estate for the money aspect, but they don't really like real estate. And I say, well, I mean, it's not the right investment for you, not the right avenue, because you really have to like it. I mean, I could talk about it all day, every day. My wife gets absolutely sick of me talking about it. And this is the reason why I have groups of guys that I hang out with consistently and constantly that are real estate dorks like me, because you have to really like it. Yeah, I completely agree. So you start out, you know, you come across, you know, this world of real estate investing is actually, you know, how you were kind of born and raised and grew up in a household like that. You decide to get your appraiser's license, first step GED. So you did that for a while. Now you're actually flipping homes in the San Francisco Bay Area. So to anybody out there thinking they have an excuse of, you know, they live in a hot market with expensive real estate, probably not going to work with you, right? <laughs> yeah, not at all. There, man, there's opportunity anywhere and everywhere, right? And I have that same voice still in my head today. That's that doubt voice. We all have it. The goal is to really silence that as much as possible. And so you silence that voice with positivity with affirmations, whatever you want to call it, right? So anybody can do anything and there's no excuse for anybody. And we, I've made a million excuses in my lifetime. And, but yeah, it doesn't matter what the price point is at the end of the day. It really doesn't. It's not, and you don't have to be rich to do this. You just have to be able to raise the money. And I never had any money to start with. When I started, I didn't have a dollar. And my very first deal, I don't know if you want to get into that yet, but I'll tell yeah, you about my it. first. Yeah. Deal. All right, cool. So my very first deal, 2009, I'm really wanting to flip. I'm watching all these other people flip. I was a consultant for the biggest flipper in California. Okay, They would bring me in once a week, sit me down on this round table, 30 other people, big screen TV on the wall. And I was analyzing everything from an appraiser's perspective. How much do you think we should have bought this property for? Why is this property not selling? Blah, blah, blah. So I'm learning again while I'm on the job, right? I got real lucky there that I met these sort of people and that they brought me in to do that consulting. So and I'm watching these same people make, you know, hundred thousand dollars a deal or whatever. I'm like, man, I could do this. I could do a better job, I think. And so I talked to my uncle. My uncle was transitioning careers. He had money. I said, hey, let's do this. I set it all up, got a property, bought it. I followed the advice of somebody else that was in retrospect, I realized I wouldn't do things like that again, but I followed his advice and he had a lot more experience than me. So I did all this stuff with no permits and I let these guys tear off the roof and rip up the driveway and rip off the front porch and got red tagged. And then I had to start going through the process of dealing with the city, getting double fined, all that sort of stuff. So it was literally a nightmare out of the gate. Actually, let me back up because we get the keys. I put a lockbox on the property. I start making plans. We go to the, there to meet with the contractor and so on who's going to do the work. And we realized that somebody broke, popped our lock, broke in, stole all our copper. And this is not a bad neighborhood either. Oh, wow. Ripped, 
all the copper. And I'm talking about every bit of copper. I had copper risers in my plumbing. For anybody that doesn't know what that means, nine times out of 10, you don't have copper risers. And it's a really rare situation. We had to open up every wall, replace all plumbing. All plumbing drains were all copper. Okay. That's so crazy. And on my wiring and all that. So right out of the gate, cost me 10 grand more to do all that. Then it was a nightmare after that. Then I had a contractor who got me popped with the city. He wouldn't come back and fix it. And so I had, I learned on the fly big time. Then the market took a little dip and my uncle by this time was so darn scared. He didn't know the first thing about real estate that he was like, look, let's just sell this thing. Let's get rid of it. I said, look, I think we need to wait this little market blip out. Everybody I'm talking to is telling us to wait out. He said, no. So we sold it, $75,000 loss. Ooh. I spent the le- next two and a half years paying him back, making payments to him, and him never investing in real estate again. Okay? Oh, no. <laughs> Very first deal, man. And so again, negative voices in your head, all that sort of stuff, really messing with me. You know, I had to really push myself through it and realize, and I think it was like Robert Kiyosaki's words were really in my ear, like, you know, you learn by making mistakes. We didn't learn to ride a bike by not scraping our knees. We didn't learn to walk by not doing the same, right? We all burned our mouth on coffee or a hot drink or soup or whatever. And we know better, hopefully, the next time. And so, hey, it's just a hard lesson. I put it this way. I have no college education. Like I said, that was my college education right there. Okay. Yeah. Learning learning in a fire, right? Yeah. hundred percent. And I've only lost money one other time. And it wasn't as bad as that one. And that was it. And that one taught me a lot of things as well. And that was, I got too confident in other people's abilities and just let them roll with it and realize that I didn't do the sniff test on the deal. Ultimately, I trusted somebody else with it. But, you know, I can say to this day, I can write through a list of things I learned from both of those mistakes, which is the right way to make a mistake. (laughs) There you go. Maybe that's the title of your next book. Yeah, right. (laughs) Let's talk about the mindset, Mario. You know, you do that first deal. It's just a punch in the mouth, right? You lose $75,000 of your family members' hard-earned money. They've got a sour taste in their mouth now. They're not ever going to come back to the real estate world. What's going through your mind and like, why in the world did you decide to continue doing this thing? I mean, most people would have just said, yeah, that thing's not working out in my market. Not for me, whatever. Moving on to the next thing. You know, maybe it was me watching uh, Rocky one too many times and <laughs> just, you know, seeing this guy get knocked down and get back up and he won't stay down. I don't know. I just, it was something I wanted and I knew I wanted it. I definitely felt defeated for a short while. And I think, you know, internally, you know, cried like a baby. And I think having the background of like, I bring my father up a lot because he is that type of guy, strong work ethic, you know, strong guy, never let us, you know, cry for too long sort of thing. And I don't know, there's just something about it. And something wouldn't let me, I don't know exactly what it was, but something wouldn't let me stop because I knew that's what I wanted to do. And so I just kept pushing through. And I had plenty of people telling me like, dude, are you sure? You sure you want to do this again? Like, you know, dude, you live once and we think we live a long time. We don't live a long time. We live a short time. And okay, so you lose money. Big deal. You'll you'll make it again. You know what I mean? If you have the capability and I don't come from like a rich family. I don't come from, you know, why I can just go like move in with my parents. It's not that type of situation, man. You know, I even though my dad might own houses and all that, he still grinds every day. You know, he's that, that old school kind of person. So I don't have all that to fall back on. I don't have parents that can be like, hey, can you loan me some money so I can pay my bills? No, it doesn't happen that way. Yeah. But I, I like that. I like the fact that I don't have that because it ha- you have a stronger fire behind you. So I don't know. It was something in that. And again, I think it really makes me realize after going through all that, how much I really do enjoy real estate, how much I enjoy the process. I was just explaining to somebody yesterday that I would flip homes for no money. Honestly, that's how much I like it. So that's saying, and that's, that's a hundred percent honest. And trust me, I've flipped homes for no money before. <laughs> <You've done it. laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. You know, look, you're not an investor until you lose money until you, and you also don't make any money on a deal. Okay. So like, and I'm like kind of like the old lady that's, you know, giving the guilt trips to their grandkids or whatever. I'm like that with my guys sometimes. I'm like, hey, you know, you made money on all these deals. You guys made, you know, you made 40 grand doing the construction for me over here. You did the plumbing over here and made another 15 grand. I didn't make anything. Right. Hey, I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. I love it. 
And I'm glad that you guys made money. It makes me feel good that you guys made money, you know, but it's like, and I do that for a camaraderie, you know, situation too. And just to let them know too, that, you know, I'm not constantly just like crushing it over here because when people hear numbers of, Oh, what'd you buy it for? What'd you sell it for? Dang, you killed it. Yeah. Right. Right. There's more money in there than you understand. <laughs> There's realtor fees. There's money fees just to borrow the money. There's fees involved here, right? So a lot of people don't take all these fees into consideration. And when you look at the bottom line, you're like, you know, it's good. It's not as good as it sounds like. So you, that's why I keep on going back to you really have to enjoy it. And especially right now in this time, this is absolutely the toughest time to do it. I have not had a harder time flipping and doing finding deals right now. There's everybody's in the mar- in the business. There's very little homes on the market. And when they do come on, there's a lot of competition. Yeah. Mario, let's talk about how somebody can get started in a position that you found yourself in, trying to do their first deal, no money, little experience. Maybe they've got some kind of background in building, construction, trade, something like that. You know, you said you went out and you, you found money to invest from other yeah. people. Talk about yeah. how you did that. I would say the number one tip I would have is don't be adverse to partnering. I partner all the time still. I have I partner on rental properties and I partner on flips, I partner on apartments, all of it. So don't be adverse to partnering. Find people, don't just find somebody who's who's smarter than you. You you do want that for sure. And maybe in certain areas, maybe you but you have to bring something to the table as well. But find somebody that you actually enjoy working with. Because I've worked with people that I don't enjoy working with and it is tough, man. It's just like having a job that you don't enjoy. It's You don't want to get up in the morning. You know, It yeah. makes it very difficult. If you can honestly have fun with the people that you're working with, it all goes so easy. And if I could do one thing again, I'd learn to do that better and surround myself with people that I really love hanging out with and just you know fire those and get rid of those who don't. So that's the first tip. The second is, there's so many resources out there, like your podcast. You know, there's podcasts, there's books, there's groups, which are great. We're going through COVID right now, so it's a little harder to, to you know, be shoulder to shoulder with these groups, especially for us guys in California. They're not opening anything up yeah. right now. But they're still online groups, and a lot of these things are free or close to free. You can go to just look up real estate investor uh, associations or real estate investor groups. Go to meetup.com. That I would say when I started doing that myself, that's when it really, you know, huge growth in my business, just really getting around other people. And that led and opened up so many other networking doors for me. It led to me being, a, I'm a member of this group called Go Abundance, which is a national group. Yeah, a lot of guys group are, of guys there. Oh my gosh, man. And that was all because I went to a meetup. So I started at a meetup and it started and it opened from there and I got invited to that group and so on and so forth. And I've been a member for four years. I actually run our Northern California chapter. Okay, Um, great. So yeah, it's, you know, just get out there, man. Start mingling. You're not going to do it sitting at home. You're not going to do it. I'm not saying don't listen to the podcast. I'm not saying don't read the books. Definitely. That's all part of it. But you got to get out there and rub shoulders with people and really get in the mix. Yeah. And by doing that, that's when the opportunities will flow for you. Real estate investing is a people business. It's a team sport, you know, talking about the hypothetical partner one might be looking for, right? Maybe they're looking for a capital partner. You alluded to first and foremost, you're looking for somebody that, you know, you can get along with. It's a good personality fit because you're going to be, you know, in a business relationship for at least 12 months, if, you know, not longer, four, five, 10 years on a buy and hold rental property. So, you know, you have to make sure that you get along with this person. There's a lot of capital out there and you probably don't want all of that capital. You know, there's good kinds of capital, bad kinds of capital, good kind of partners, bad kind of partners. So I think having that alignment of vision and goals is, you know, the first and foremost important thing when looking for someone in a partner like that. 100%, man. What we all need to understand is that that's a relationship, just like a marriage. Just it's different. You got to treat it as such. If you don't, that's when people fight and they go to court and they get divorced and they, you know, split. And that's not the way you want to do it because you just lose money. You pay a bunch of attorneys. They get rich, not you and your partner. So yeah, out of the gate, just make sure that that relationship is going to work. Don't force it. It's just like, you know, don't get married to the wrong person. They don't force that. And, it, and we all know it's in the back of our minds. I've been there. I've, I've done that. I've had that, that experience. And we all know, you know, that little voice in the back of our head saying, I don't think this is right. You know, trust that part of you. 
And you might think you're passing on a really great opportunity, but I guarantee you're not. I guarantee that the opportunities coming because you didn't take that one are going to be that much better. I've learned this lesson thousands of times. A couple things you've talked about are, you know, getting out there and networking with people and then taking action, right? Like you said, you learned so much from that first deal. Had you, you know, you know, just elected to try to read books about flipping, you know, you would have not learned all these mistakes you did by actually getting out there, doing a deal, making your own mistakes. And then also the networking piece, right? You know, you talk about the importance of, you know, surrounding yourself with a bunch of guys who, you know, like to talk real estate or, you know, your go abundance network. So talk about the importance of that networking piece. Yeah. So here's the way that I describe a network. We as humans, we can learn in a lot of different ways. We can learn by listening. We can learn by reading. We can learn by doing. When you're part of a network of people that are smarter than you in certain categories, just by you being around them and or let me just step back and or doing things better than you. So it's kind of like my top coach in the world I learned a lot from is Tony Robbins. And Tony Robbins will tell you, never want to play basketball against people that are as good as you or less good as you. You always want to be playing people better than you. Why? Because it will naturally push you to do better. When I joined Go Abundance, I was a very, very small fish in the Go Abundance pond. And I'm still a small fish in their pond. However, I've grown so much in so many ways by osmosis is what I call it. Just by being around it. You can't help but do it. You don't even think about it. It just happens. It's just all these small little habits start to change and the way that you do things start to change. I can tell you by surrounding myself with high caliber networks, I've improved so many areas of my life physically. So, and I want to talk about this because people don't talk about the physical thing nearly enough because if we're not healthy, if we're not physically vibrant, if we don't have the energy and all that, we won't be able to do anything. All yeah. that is all going to be an idea, right? It's all going to be a want that we have. Yeah. And so if you don't have that physical health, when I, um, first, Joined Go Abundance, I was about 200 pounds, uh, 26, 27% body fat. We got triathletes in this group. We got, you know, <laughs> like just badasses in this group. We've had multiple Navy SEALs come talk to us. And, you know, you just can't help. And I've never done a triathlon, but I'll tell you what, I'm 165, same exact weight I was when I was uh, 18 years old. And I'm, 11.5% body fat right now, something like that, and never been healthier. I'm 38 years old. And it was important to me. I said to myself, I want to be as healthy as I can be before I hit 40. My kids, I want to be able to keep up with them. Once you hit 40, if you know anything about health, your health starts to deteriorate pretty quickly. It's 30 is the 40, but 40 is like that, that real big, what they call like over the hill, right? And uh, I've never felt better, honestly, in my life. But that's really, really important because I can still keep up. Like last night, I got like five hours of sleep. Man, I feel like a million bucks. It's <laughs> It doesn't bother. And I'm like an eight to nine hour asleep guy. But I just, I had some stuff going on. I just couldn't sleep. But it's okay. You know, it, my next day doesn't suffer anymore. In the past, I would have canceled everything and slept in because I can't operate. I can't get by, whatever. And honest to God, this is no lie. I haven't been sick. This year will be eight years. Not a cold, not a sore throat, not a anything. What do you I've gotten rid of all that. Diet, exercise, combination? It started, with di- it started with diet, turned into exercise. But I can tell you, I do intermittent fasting every single day. Uh, so it's 11.30, 11.40 where I'm at right now. I haven't eaten a thing. I won't eat a thing until about 3, 4 o'clock. Wow, that's pretty um, long. Yeah. And it sounds difficult, but when you learn to do it, your body becomes adapted. Sometimes I'm not hungry till nine o'clock at night. And I'm like, seriously, you don't actually get hungry. And so it's not, there's no like, and the, hangry doesn't exist when you do intermittent fasting. And I do keto personally. So my body's burning fat all the time. Yeah. And it's not just like shoving meat in my mouth. No, my, most of my diet is, it's like 75% vegetables, 25%, you know, meat and fat and so on. Mm-hmm. That's that part of it. I have a pretty strict supplement diet where I take a lot of, I'm a big believer in mushrooms. I can go on a tangent about mushrooms for, really? for a long, very, very, very long time. I'll tell you one thing that few people know about mushrooms is that we are way closely, closer related to a mushroom than we are a plant. So a plant takes carbon dioxide, 
out of the air and converts it to oxygen, right? right? Humans take oxygen out of the air and convert it to carbon dioxide. So do mushrooms. They're the only living species other than, you know, other like animals, like humans yeah. that do that on Earth. Interesting. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah. When you know, understand that portion of it, and then you consume what's called the mycelium portion of the mushroom nuts. So not the sprouting fruiting body. It's the stuff that's in, interweaving in the soil. That stuff is the immune system of the mushroom itself. So when you take it, you actually adopt their immune system. So I take a complex at 17 of the most powerful mushrooms that people have discovered now as far as immunity goes. And that's for my immune system. I hate being sick, man. I absolutely hate being sick. And I made a pact. I got pneumonia. Uh, so was, you know, when my son was, so he's nine now. He was one years old and he got it too. And we both got pneumonia, super oh, yeah. sick. Yeah. And I made a pact then. I was like, dude, I'm never getting sick again. How do I do it? Started Googling, started reading books, you know, whatever. And I got strict. I really did get strict in my diet because I said, I, so like this whole COVID thing, it doesn't really bother me because I'm like, you know, I don't think I'm going to get sick. I think if I were to be around other people who had it, if I felt anything, I know when I start to feel, and I felt, I've had that feeling. I'm not going to lie of like, I think I might start getting sick. Yeah. So I just like go crazy with my like regimen the vitamin next day C and the whole nine yards and vitamin C every hour, every hour. So, that it, so if anybody's feeling anything or you think you're getting sick, start taking vitamin C every single hour. Get a high, get, get a good quality whole food vitamin C. Take it every hour. That wow. is 100%. Vitamin D levels, you should be having 5,000 to 10,000 I use a day for the average person. Get your blood tested. Take vitamin D. But those two vitamins right there are way, nobody puts enough value on those things. Throw in some good mushrooms. Change your body's alkalinity a little bit. Greens. I eat a lot of greens. I take green powder shakes and stuff like that. And I'm not like some weird like vegan eats tofu. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to offend anybody, but <laughs> no, you no, know, you're good. I can't get by without eating meat and stuff like that. And I'm not a person who absolutely loves vegetables. I have to enjoy what I eat. And I do absolutely enjoy everything that I eat. So again, just like the relationships, what you have with your business partners, make sure you're really enjoying your diet. Make it fit you. And don't tell anybody else, don't let anybody else tell you that that's not the right way to do it. Hey, you know what works for me, dude. That's all I got to say. Yeah. You know, I love it. I didn't know this was going to turn into a health podcast. Sorry, man. No, I love it. It's good. To know. <laughs> you know, I think you bring up a really good point. You know, we can talk about real estate and wealth and the tactics of, you know, different strategies and how to flip houses and the nuts and bolts of things. But if you don't have your health, what's it worth? Right? Like, I mean, Nothing. you're not going to be doing that stuff if you don't have your health. And if, if right. you don't have your health, then why are you even starting at B when you need to focus on A, right? So 100%. great points there. Do you have yeah. a, do you have like a resource or a place you've learned a lot, maybe around particularly the mushroom topic, maybe mm -hmm. somebody could go to and learn more Absolutely. about this? Google a guy named Paul Stamets. And, oh, okay. Um, yeah. I've heard Paul, of him actually. Paul's been on, I've known about Paul for about 15 years now, but he's recently been discovered by Joe Rogan. Tony Robbins has had him on and speak at his stuff. Tim Ferriss uh, also had him on his podcast a few times. So he's become very mainstream now, but he is a freaking mushroom genius. He actually just made a movie about mushrooms. It's on Netflix right now. So like, like the dude, like you'll go down his deep rabbit hole about mushrooms and he'll blow your mind with the importance of mushrooms and all that. Uh, beyond that, I'd say, man, just uh, there's a few Dr. Andrew Weil is, is very good. I like his stuff. If anybody's, you know, if you like, like a Joe Rogan or a Jocko or any of these guys, they all know how to stay healthy. And yeah. so they all have good people on Dr. Rhonda Patrick. They have on a lot. She's phenomenal. So, uh, they, dude, the resources are there, you know, they're all there and they're free. We don't have to go to the public library and check a book out and then force ourselves to read it anymore. We can listen to, you know, like a world renowned comedian like Joe Rogan, just like crush it and have fun listening to it and learn something all at the same time. Sometimes I almost feel guilty how easy it is to get information when I come across a subject that I don't know anything about, like yeah. take this mushroom topic, for instance, right? I've got no excuse not to know these things because I could easily just pull it up on my phone right now or yeah. look at my laptop. I mean, you've got the world at your fingertips. No excuse yeah. not to know things. 100%, man. We're all walking, you know, eating, breathing billionaires right now in the essence with what we have at our fingertips. You want to know how to do something? YouTube it, dude. Somebody else has already done it. They'll teach you for free. You know what I mean? Yeah. We'll tie this back to, uh, you know, real estate and, and that whole topic. You know, real estate investors 
in my perspective, sometimes have a lack of balance in their life. I mean, maybe mm. they're the workaholic, you know, they're mm-hmm. neglecting their health or their family life or whatever. Yeah. How have you managed to kind of keep all those things and balance? I know that's a really big, sure. big component of go abundance. And just as a side note for the audience members that maybe this sounds familiar, we've actually had co-founder of go abundance, Mike McCarthy on the podcast. Oh, sweet. Uh, so if that sounds familiar to you, that's why. So that's awesome. I didn't know you had Mike on the podcast. Yeah, Mike's he's a, a great friend. guy. Yeah, Mike's a good friend of mine. Awesome guy. Yeah, so balance, man. I've learned a lot through that group for sure. But I also learned early on that you're never going to be fully in balance. And you got to let yourself off the hook for that. Because it's kind of, I'll bring up another Tony Robbins quote. You know, it's that whatever you put energy in, that's going to expand. And so we can only put focus on certain amount of things. So we're, you know, where focus goes, energy goes, or it or flows is what it is, how it goes. So it's okay to, you know, one day you focus on your marriage and the other day you focus on your kids. The other day you focus on your health. And we have to learn to do that all in one day, right? Ultimately, that's what balance really is. And I think if we're honest with ourselves and we take a step back and we say, why are we doing this? Why do I want to invest in real estate? Why do I invest, want to invest in anything? I want to invest my time to learn to do all this stuff. Okay. I want to do it for money. Why are you doing it for money? Oh, I'm doing it for money for my family, for my kids. Maybe I can give my kids something better, or maybe I can just enjoy it, you know, myself a little bit more. Okay. So then how are you able to enjoy it if you don't take the time to enjoy it? Right. That's like the number one thing. So now it starts becoming time. All right. So how do you get that time back? Well, you can't create more of it. We all have the same amount of time. We all have 24 hours. All right. So do I need to sleep less? No, not necessarily. Now it starts becoming something that nobody wants to talk about. And that's discipline because discipline sounds like you're being disciplined. Like, you know, your parents going to whip out a belt and whip you or something like that. That's our connotation of discipline, but it's not because discipline ultimately is you're thinking of all these things ahead of time. So you say, if this happens, I know how to make this shift. So I'll tell you one of the ways that I've learned to discipline myself because I don't like discipline either. Okay. I, I'm I, one of those people I'm like adverse to it, but I realize that it works for me. And so like, I'll tell you one of my little secrets that I have is I don't know where the heck I heard this, or where I read this, but I, somebody said it years ago, it's probably 10 plus years ago. I had the hardest time waking up in the morning without hitting the snooze button multiple times. I mean, I'm not lying when I tell you I've hit the snooze button for like two hours. No joke. Okay. But I haven't done that in like 10 years either. So I, I set my alarm on my phone. I set my phone on the charger on the other side of the bedroom. And I told myself the night before, because see, we're different people when we wake up the next day. We're totally, we're like Jekyll and Hyde, right? <laughs> the hormones in your body are all different. Everything's different. We all say we're going to crush it at night. We wake up in the morning. And we're like, oh my God, this sounds terrible, man. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to go through this shit. Excuse my French. So ultimately... You're forced to get up in the morning. So this is what I tell myself. I give myself little, little bursts. Because if I tell myself, I'm going to go for a run this morning, I'm going to go, you know, do CrossFit, I'm going to do all this stuff, I won't do it. But if I tell myself, hey, dude, you're just going to get up and turn the alarm off on your phone. Okay, that's quick, easy task. All right. Then I tell myself, all right, well, you're already up. So you might as well just go get a glass of water. So once you go out of your room and go into your kitchen, grab a glass of water, you're probably not going to go back to bed. Yeah. But just in case I tell myself, all right, you've already done that. Might as well just take your supplements real fast. All right. Take my supplements real fast. Might as well just have some coffee. Well, if you do that, dude, it's all over, right? Definitely. Yeah, you started. Not gonna, right. <laughs> exactly. But what I've done to my now is as soon as I pick up my phone and I'm walking out of the door, I already start doing breathing exercises. So I do deep breathing exercises. I start oxygenating myself. And man, within 10 seconds, you're like, you're like 25% awake. Within a few minutes, you're like 50 to 75% there before you even have your coffee. I do have coffee. Some people don't have it. That's fine. But oxygenating yourself because you've been breathing shallowly all night long, right? And so you're forcing all this oxygen into your system. But this is just one way that I've learned to combat my mind. And we all have different fights with our mind, all kinds of different ones. But this is personally works for me. It's these little tiny things. I lie to myself all the time. I tell myself, you don't have to do the big task. Just show up. It's kind of like, you know what? You don't have to work out. Just go to the gym. And once you're there, dude, you're going to work out, right? Very rarely, or it's like at least walk in, check in, and go sit down on a weight bench or whatever. You know, 
you're not going to turn around and go home. You're already even like, I'm already, I've already made the drive, whatever. Yeah. So if you learn to, to discipline yourself that way, see, it's a totally different form of discipline. Lying to yourself, really? Like, it sounds bizarre, but I tell you what, I know a lot of other high performers that do the same exact thing and it works absolute wonders. You're really just building momentum with little steps, one little step after another, right? And yeah. that goes in your personal life. I mean, that could, you know, be construed to your real estate business. Yeah. You know, you're just building momentum, taking one little step after another. I always tell myself when it comes to running, like, okay, I don't know if I'll actually run three miles today, but I'm going to put on my shoes and go outside, stretch, and then 100%. get started. And yep. maybe sometimes I'll knock out three miles. Yeah. Maybe I'm just not feeling it, you know, yeah. turns into one and a half or something, or maybe I'm feeling great and it turns into six. Yeah. Really, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So see, you do the same exact thing and that's exactly what I'm talking about. And so many people don't put enough importance on something so small, but yet it's so big. It's like, to me, it's like, that's like the leverage that you need to just lift something heavy. It's just, you know, it's just that, just get, get it in there, man. Just, you know, put that crowbar in there. And then all of a sudden you realize, wow, I have a lot more leverage. And so that's where balance is to me. Balance is saying you're going to do something and doing it because we all say we're going to have date night and then Friday night rolls around. It's eight o'clock at night and we're freaking tired and we don't do it. Right. Yeah. There's ways to combat a lot of these things. There's ways to combat fatigue. There's ways to combat stress without smoking or without doing drugs or drinking. And so if you learn to do these things, if you learn to combat stress in a way that's going to make you healthier, oh my God, what a game changer. So for anybody out there who's listening, who smokes or drinks or does, or, you know, smokes weed or whatever, I'm not going to knock all that stuff. Okay. I will flat out knock cigarettes. I'm sorry. Yeah. There's definitely, there can be plenty of health benefits to that if you're doing it correctly. But if you're doing it constantly to numb yourself and you're doing it constantly because you have such a stress level, it's not ultimately, you're never really going to recover from that. But there are natural positive ways that you could take that stress level and bring it down. And it will actually make you healthier on top of all that. And so if you have all these things, then it makes life so much easier to balance. And when your significant other is upset with you about something, rather than go into that fight or flight mode, you're going to freak out and yell right back. You know, maybe you'll be in a position where you'll say, you know what, I'm going to listen because they're not emotional for no reason. They're emotional for a reason. Okay. I know it's hard to take or whatever, but I'm going to listen to that. And that, and all these things, these are all tools in the tool belt that will allow you to have the balance. And it, I'm going to go back to your network and the people that you hang around. If you hang around people that all have failed marriages, chances are you're going to have a failed marriage. If you hang around people that are all very unhealthy, chances are you're going to be unhealthy. We will gravitate to our tribe, the group of people that we're around. We are just like wolves. We're pack animals, man. And we are going to do whatever our pack does at the end of the day. I call myself a black sheep on purpose because it reminds me that I need to constantly be pushing. I can't need to be constantly leading. I need to constantly try to, and a leader doesn't mean that you're like telling everybody what to do. It's just like, Hey, you're willing to put yourself out there. That's what a leader does. But if you're constantly elevating your social group, you'll be constantly elevating yourself without even realizing it. And so the one tip I'm going to have on that is people will say, well, you know what? Maybe I live in an area and I don't know anybody. I don't know anybody who has this, you know, uh, status of the people that I want to transform to. I'll tell you my little trick. And this is before there was a, such a thing called podcasts or I don't even, I'm pretty sure YouTube wasn't even around back then. No, nah, I wasn't around back then, but I'll tell you, I have them sitting right back over here. This is my Tony Robbins set of CDs that I have back over here. And I bought those things like, 20 plus years ago and I would have that CD player on, on clipped to my belt or something like that, you know, with my <laughs> headphones on. And that's how I learned to change my environment. And what's funny is that I listen to Tony Robbins. I listen to Jim Rohn. I listen to Darren Hardy and all these guys and they did the same exact thing. You might be in a war zone right now. Put those headphones on and listen to that. You'll change your environment right there. So you start changing your environment, you start changing your inner world and your outer world will automatically start adjusting to you. I love it. So true. Yeah. You know, uh, we had Mike, I name dropped him already, you know, on the podcast, I'll have to go back and look at the episode number, but we had him on because he co-authored the book Tribe of Millionaires. And that's the yep. premise of that book, right? You know, mm -hmm. having a tribe, you know, you going back to that 
philosophy gym room quote, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. You're right. Sometimes people are in an environment where physically they don't have anybody doing what they, it is they want to do. Right. But in today's world, you know, we're on a zoom call, you know, you can get online, you know, connect with people, social media, YouTube, all these different things. So, you know, you can have mentors and people who are elevating you that you don't necessarily even have to know. 100%, man. That It's so true. You, we have such easy access to all these people. The only reason that we're not doing it is because the excuse is that we say that we can't do it. That's it. That's the only reason why. We all have access to it. You know how many homeless people I see with cell phones? I mean, these are like full-blown homeless people. They have cell phones, right? They don't cost that much anymore. And so if you have a cell phone, you have a, especially a smartphone, you have literally the world is at your fingertips right there. The only thing that's stopping you from getting it is the excuses you're making for yourself. And that's it. hundred percent. Yeah. Let's, I kind of want to go back and touch on the topic that uh, I wrote down here. So we're talking about physical health and mm. I also want to talk about mental health. You know, you talk about as real estate investors, you know, we're always trying to grow and scale and do more and hustle yeah. more and, you know, try to squeeze more hours out of the day. That kind of, can drain on your mental health. You know, you feel like you got to catch up with, you know, the people you see on social media and you got to keep pushing and you're stressed and you're not kind of enjoying the fruits of your labor. Talk about how you've balanced that and what's your perspective there? Yeah. So really with the mental health game, I think A, it's important that we are able to do things that we actually want to do, no matter what somebody else thinks, no matter what somebody else could be saying about it or whatever on social media. And so that tip right there is, I might post a lot on social media because I do, but I don't read a lot on social media. I read a few different people that I like to follow and I'll mute those negative ones. So, you know, turn off as much negative as possible. I'm going to keep going back to it, but the tribe stuff, you get to choose your friends. You don't get to choose your family. And we all have family that may be draining us and you don't have to flat out, you know, just attack them and say, I'm never talking to you again, but maybe just shorten that conversation with them in a nice way. What I decided to do, I have a lot of negative people or used to actually, they're not, they're not so negative anymore in my family. And what I would always just say is I'm just going to elevate that. If, if I'm walking into a group, my goal is to elevate that conversation. My goal is to elevate all of it. And so I'm going to, if hearing people talk negatively, I'm going to figure out some way to just put a positive spin on it. And it's interesting. You build that momentum. And so that's one key right there. You have to get, give yourself time and don't feel guilty about giving yourself your own time. It's a conversation I still have to have with my wife all the time because she gives herself 100% to me and the kids. And I tell her, look, man, if you do that, you're not going to be there and be fresh for, for us at all, right? And so we all have to take our breaks and have some. And I personally like quiet time, you know, like literal quiet time. Maybe reading is the only thing that I'm doing at the time or journaling or something like that. But when you can turn off all the distractions and take five freaking minutes for yourself, not sleeping, you're still awake when you're doing this, but five minutes is going to make all the world a difference. So do, do things that you enjoy doing. If you can choose between two things that you enjoy doing and one is going to be unhealthy and one's healthy, go the healthier route. That will pay you back dividends versus taking dividends from you, right? Yeah. And so it's kind of like, I'm going to talk, I'm going to make that kind of like the Robert Kiyosaki. Rich Dad, Poor Dad book, he said, there's an asset and there's a liability, right? So the asset's kind of like the healthy route. The liability is like the unhealthy route. That's right. the way I look at it. You know, it's pretty cut and dry. And honestly, there's, there's two different paths. So for me too, the physical stuff, I don't do a whole heck of a lot of it, man. I do a little bit of it throughout the day. So like before our call, I'll tell you one of my little secrets I do. This is by watching and going to a lot of different Tony Robbins events and seeing how he stays on stage for 20 hours at a time. Yeah, he's got a lot of stamina. Dude, and he's like 6'7 and like 265 <laughs> pounds, right? Yeah. Big guy. But you'll see that what he does is he gets you out of your seat and gets you moving. Before me and you jumped on this call, man, I spent five minutes moving, jumping up and down, jumping jacks, doing deep breathing. And so I periodically do that throughout the day. I probably end up doing 500 to 1,000 jumping jacks on most days, honestly, but never in one stretch. I'll do 50 to 100 at a time, but I'm constantly doing it. I'm at a stand-up desk right now. I was just going to bring that up to the audience members that can't see. You're standing up right now. Making yeah. me feel a little guilty. I need to be <laughs> standing desk and, it's, and stand it's up. All right. But yeah, no, that's great. And uh, it just keeps your energy levels up throughout the day, right? So. It does. And standing, it changes your biochemistry, it really does. It puts you in it. I mean, like when you're standing, you're ready to run, you're ready to do something. When you're sitting down, you're like, you're ready to go to sleep, right? 
And so I noticed that about myself that when I sat, I was so much less productive and I was and the standing thing was just kind of coming out. I went a little too far with it. I built a standing desk on a treadmill and then I injured my, (laughs) I literally injured myself because I started walking barefoot on this thing and I got really bad plantar fasciitis on my right foot that still actually screws with me to this day. And that was like 10 years ago, but just by the standing desk alone and, and don't push it too far, but mine's an adjustable one that goes up and down. So that's one of those ones too. But Taking a little bit of time for yourself, taking a little bit of time for yourself physically, taking a little bit of time for yourself on some mental stuff. And again, you have to enjoy it. I used to give myself crap because I wasn't listening to Audible enough and I was listening to too many podcasts. And I realized, you know what though? I learned way more in most podcasts than I ever do on Audible. It's so much more interactive and it's, it fits what I like. So I'm just going to cancel my Audible. I have enough Audible now. I have probably have, you know, 30 books I haven't read yet or listened to. But I chip away because I also read every single night and I haven't missed that reading, honest to God, for like 15 years, every single night. And it just becomes a habit and a routine. And there's certain elements of me that hate habit and routine. There's certain elements of me that love habit and routine. So I just keep doing the ones that work. And if they don't work or if I'm not liking it, I just don't do them. You know, you talk about having discipline and there's a phrase that Jocko Willink coined, discipline equals freedom, right? In fact, it's the title of one of his books, but Mm -hmm. there's an interesting kind of phenomenon there when you discipline yourself and you set kind of parameters for yourself, it gives you this weird sense of freedom, right? Like you're like, I'm going to wake up at six o'clock tomorrow. You hold yourself accountable, you wake up and then you got the day started on your own terms and you know, you've got the freedom to, you know, you got in a nice workout, you're feeling good. Now you can, you know have a little bit of freedom and kind of time to yourself, if you will. Yeah, no, 100%, man. Yeah, in his book, (laughs) Discipline Equals Freedom, it's a phenomenal book. I've listened to it multiple times. I've read it multiple times. I would highly recommend that book to anybody. And and any of his work, man, is just outrageously good. Yeah, he's a great guy. He's, you know, super motivational. You know, you look at his Instagram and see his picture (laughs) of his watch, and it's like, (laughs) he's up before me, and he's on the West Coast. I'm like, gosh, man, this guy's a maniac. But uh, No, I was is he up before you, but he's showing you his watch with all the sweat on the ground. He just crushed it. And it's like four o'clock in the morning. You're like, what? Yeah. He's a beast. Right, right. Yeah. No, that's Love great. That well, hey, it's been a lot of fun talking with you, Mario. Let's wrap up with our famous lightning round. I just said famous. I don't know that's actually truly famous. but Oh, man, we're all famous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways, let's jump right into it. First question in the lightning round is, what was your biggest hurdle getting started investing in real estate? And then what did you do to overcome that? My biggest hurdle is just getting started and overcoming it is just taking action and just do something towards it. I'm going to bring up another Tony Robbins quote, never set a goal without doing something towards its attainment right then and there. So taking action, man. Action trumps anything else. Yeah, for sure. Do you have a personal habit that contributes to your success, Mario? Personal habit is forcing myself as much as possible to look at the glass half full something I teach to my kids all the time. And I fall victim to it all the time, looking at the glass half empty. But whenever I catch myself doing it, I force myself to look at it half full. I love it. Do you have an online resource you find valuable in your day to day? Online resource that I find valuable? Yeah. Jocko's Instagram. (laughs) (laughs) That's good. Look it up. Yeah. Uh, Mario, what book would you recommend to the audience members and why? Uh, the book that changed my life personally is uh, Tony Robbins' book, Awaken the Giant Within. That is an absolute phenomenal book. It's a beast of a book. But I would say if it's too big for you, just search anything Tony Robbins. And when you really get to know him as a person, not from what you see on the facade, you got to dig a little bit deeper. You'll see that he's one of the best people in the entire world to learn from. Yeah, I love his stuff. We'll link that book in the show notes for audience members to pick up if they haven't read it yet. Last question in the lightning round, Mario. If you were to go back and give advice to your 20-year-old self to get started investing in real estate specifically, what would you tell yourself? Don't take it all so seriously. It's not as big as you're making it out to be. We all make things way bigger in our minds than they really are. And when we get down to it, it wasn't that big of a deal. So just start small, start somewhere, take that action. And it's not that big of a deal you'll survive. If you lose money, you'll survive. Don't worry about it. I love it. Mario, hey, this was a really fun conversation. Took it to some interesting points. You know, We touched on some topics we usually don't on the show, so it was really good and refreshing. Tell us a little bit about what you're up to these days and where people can find and learn more about you. 
Yeah. So right now, actually with my buddy, Vinny Chopra and a mutual friend of ours. Yes, uh, our good friend, Vinny. Yeah. We're starting a podcast together right now. We're actually already starting to talk about working on a book and as well as some courses and all that. So we're going to meld together our different coaching capabilities and try to create something based on that. And uh, really getting a lot more involved like you are in an apartment syndication. So I've got a lot more of that under my belt. And uh, just moving forward, man, I just I realize more and more, I just love sharing. I don't care if I'm making a dollar from it. I just really love giving. I, lo- I love sharing and uh, just doing a whole lot more of that and trying to do more of the things that I enjoy. You can just Google my name and find me. I'm on my name is a little bit of a mouthful. It's a little unique. So you may find one other person with my name that they'll probably be in Sicily, where where's my family is from. But uh, beyond that, yeah, just look me up and you can get my contact information online and anybody can contact me directly. Great. Mario, hey, it's been so much fun having you on the podcast as we're wrapping up here. Is there any parting piece of advice would you like to leave with our audience members? I say just, I'm going to go back to what I said before is don't take everything so seriously. That's the number one piece of advice I have. and. Trust me, I've been through a lot of th- personal therapy to to get over this little <laughs> hurdle I'm talking about. Don't take everything so seriously. It's not that big of a deal, right? And so if you learn to use that mantra that you're going to wake up the next day and everything is going to get better, and it's not not a big of a deal as we're making it. I think that if everybody were to do that, we'd all have a lot less stress level. I love it. Mario Mazamuto, thanks so much for coming on the podcast today. Jacob, honored. Thank you so much. Take care. Take care. Well, hey, what a great conversation that was with Mario Mazamuto. We got into some topics we don't usually discuss here on the podcast, things like health, fitness, nutrition, etc. Lots of great stuff. That's one of the many benefits of speaking with new people is you get to hear their perspectives and take away little golden nuggets from the conversation. So I hope you got so much value from today's podcast. If you want to learn more about any of the resources or things we mentioned in the show, you can find those in the show notes. As always, for more information, resources, and to connect with me, you can do so at www.jacobayers.com. Until next week, engineer the lifestyle you want. You've been listening to the Real Estate Way to Wealth and Freedom podcast, providing you actionable content to build your real estate empire. Nothing on this show should be considered specific, personal, or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for personal advice. The opinions of guests are their own. Information is not guaranteed. All investment strategies have a potential for profit or loss. The host is operating on behalf of the Real Estate Way to Wealth and Freedom, LLC, exclusively.